lower than the other question. If a question is lower, it is a prerequisite to a higher question. So meaning, the questions must be arranged from the easiest questions and the last will be the most difficult. So questions must be arranged in chronological order by the easiest going to the hardest or the most difficult. You cannot answer number two question unless you answer number one. Ibig sabihin. Or you cannot satisfy the last question unless you satisfy the first, the second, the third, or the other questions that are easier as a prerequisite to the last question. And most probably than not, the last question is your general research objective. Again, most probably than not, in the statement of the specific question, the last question, which is called the highest question, the most difficult question, is your general or overall research objective. Matalas ganon. Where can you find the research objective, overall research objective? At the last no, paragraph in the introduction. Saan pa? It is the general problem. A statement of the problem is composed of the general problem and the specific problem. Dama? So the first is the general problem and most probably the general problem is your last question. Okay? Now, the types of research questions that we must remember will be your guide in developing your specific questions. The first one is called factor isolating question. The factor isolating question is the lowest level in the hierarchy or taxonomy of questions. When you hear something such as taxonomy, you remember a stair. Before you can go to the second step of the stair, you have to step first the first, then takya. So the first step in the type of research question is the factor isolating question. It is also the question, what is this? They are sometimes called factor naming questions. You, the factor there is your variable. Factor is also similar with the variable. So meaning, you get one variable, then you ask a question about that variable. If you have three major variables, you must have three factor naming variables. If you have two major variables in your statement, of, in your overall research objective, you have two factor isolating questions. But how do you make it? Example number one. What is the profile of business managers in terms of age, management experience, education attainment, and management training? This is how you're going to make a factor isolating question. And what in question letter A, we have isolated the profile. The profile is the major variable of your participants' business managers. You can only answer the major variable by enumerating sub variable. So the sub variables are the age, management experience, location attainment, and management training. Another example, what is the degree of the competences of entrepreneurs as described by the respective supervisors and employers with respect to interpersonal and interpersonal aspects? So you have your major variable degree of competencies. You cannot answer degree of competencies unless you will answer the sub variable. So there are two sub variables in this case, but there are many participants. Next, let us see. How are the selected food chains in the global city rated in terms of quality of food, offering of services, and physical characteristics? When you make a question like this, it means that's the lowest question, lowest type of questions in the hierarchy which only isolate a factor. What is the factor profile? Inihiwalay mo. 
degree of competencies. You separate it and you make a question and then select it for teams. Umiwalay mo sila. You are just describing a major variable in a factor isolating questions. So all of you are required to have a factor naming questions. There are no research that has no factor isolating questions. Because always the research starts with describing your major variable. And how to describe it? By making a factor isolating question. The lowest. How many factor isolating questions? It depends upon the number of major variables you have. The major variables you have are in your title. If you have two major variables, there are two major, uh, two factor isolating questions. If there are three major variables in your title, there are three factor isolating questions. Yes? Let's proceed. The second higher level is called factor relating questions. From the word relating questions, relating, you are somewhat asking the question, what is happening here? Factor relating. When I say relating, there is a relationship that exists between at least two variables. Di ba? Pag sinabi may karelasyon ka, it means there is one that you have a relationship. So, the minimum number of variables when you do some relationship is two. Can we have three in a relationship? Other woman. Can we have three? Yeah, meron din, di ba? Halimbawa, barkada nyo, you are three. So, you are in a relationship, barkada three. Can we have four in a relationship? Yeah. We can have as many as we can. Example, lahi nyo. Magkakarelasyon kayo lang kayo sa ngayon, you are 50. So, the 50 have the relationship. Those who accepted you today as your Lord and personal Savior, si Lord, di ba ginawa natin kanina, you have accepted Jesus as your Savior, you become children of God. So, kanina po, so few raise their hands. So, kakaano kayo, what is your relationship? We are children of God or we are brothers and sisters in Christ and we are children of God. Our relationships are brothers and sisters. So, pwede madami, but the minimum is two. Okay. Now, examples. What relationships and interrelationships are observed between and among the following variables? So, in this case, there are three major variables. Relationship of intrapersonal to interpersonal. Relationship of interpersonal to productivity level. That is what makes the relationship. When we combine interpersonal and interpersonal, its relation to productivity, we call it interrelationship. Or if we combine interpersonal and productivity level, we're looking at the relationship of these two to the other one, we call it interrelationships. Kaya we call it between the two or between the three or among the three. Okay, next example. What is the significant influence of the level of performance of supervisors to the performance of management students during their on-the-job training? So in this case, the relationship is the influence. Because in research, when we speak about relationship, we are not only speaking about a good relationship between two variables, but we are also looking into its differences at the top. And also its association. How do the environmental values of the residents associate to the result of waste disposal management system of Barangay Kampiti? Now, in research, Relationship can either be direct relationship or indirect relationship, but also it can be the insignificant influence. It can also be an association. Or it can also be a significant difference between two groups. 
When you see those words, those pertains to all about relationship. Because in research, there are two major relationships. It's either positive or negative relationship. Positive or negative relationship. Positive relationship is something like this. When the magnitude of one variable is going up, tumataas yung magnitude, the other variables is also going up. That is positively relationship or and the term used in statistics is positively correlated with each other. When one, the magnitude of one variable is going down, the other major variable is also going down, we call it as positively correlated. Positively correlated variables, their magnitudes are the same. When one is going up, the other is going up. Example, when you have a good manager, there will be a good performance of employees. Correct? When there is a very good leadership style, there are also good level of productivity in the office. So meaning, they are positively related. When your manager has a negative or has poor leadership style, the performance has also is also poor. We call it as positive relationship. When one goes up, the other variables goes up. When one goes down, the other variables goes down. 